This is the kickstand for the uh, Suzuki FZ50. It's been bothering me for a while that it's just so rusty. Not that the bike's in perfect condition. But um, I thought this would be a fairly quick and easy paint up, similar to the XL250 foot pegs I did the other day. Um, so I'm just going to pull it apart into its various components, give it a brush up on the wire wheel and uh, a coat of paint and then stick it back on the bike and while I'm doing it I'm going to uh, clean the uh, exhaust up and um, give that a coat of paint and that can go back on the bike as well um, just help keep some of the rust at bay uh, it's a good opportunity to grease up some of the pivots as well I'm sort of rushing this a bit I'm trying to I'm racing daylight because I want to get out and use the, the wire wheel outside keep the dirt and dust down That before it gets dark. And somewhere. Somewhere. I really must tidy this room up. It's funny, you do, do a few little jobs and you throw a few things on the bench and then before you know it you can't find anything. Where is my dinky hand? I'm sure my dinky hands are. There you are. Hiding on the floor where you belong. do without this drift. It's the best couple of quid I've ever spent. It's not actually a proper drift, it's just a brass rod that I bought off eBay. So we're selling it in like 10, 20, 30 centimetre lengths. Okay, we've got a biggish washer and then we've got this pin which I think will tap out. Ah, there we go. Bit of brute force. Time to use the drift again. Did I mention how much I love this drift? <laughs> it's a bloody useful. Ah, that would be useful. Should we take the spring off? Whew, what are we going to use to do that with? Small ish screwdriver or something like. Too flimsy, too flimsy, too expensive. Come on. Something. That might do it. Right. See if we can do this without killing myself or losing the spring. No, apparently I'm too weedy. There we go. One spring. Put that aside. That's easier with no tension on. One pin. One bracket. It would be nice to take that rubber cushion off. The way it's shaped is sort of a triangular knob in there and um, I think it's kind of one of those one-way things where once it's fitted it ain't coming out. Or well, maybe. Or am I? Am I winning? Ouch. Yep, I'm winning. I won. Toss me a finger but I won. Right, well that's good, that makes life easier, so I can really go to it now. So that needs cleaning up on the wire wheel, that needs cleaning up on the wire wheel. The spring I'm going to leave alone because it looks galvanised, rubber obviously I'm going to leave alone. And I'll run that through and the pin will get a quick clean up. I'm not sure I want to paint the whole of that pin. It's a bit of wear on there. But I might just give it a quick once over on the wire wheel to clean it up. Right. Because I'm an idiot and having told myself not to do it, I went and knocked the can of paint over. It's next day, all the paint has dried, it's had a couple of coats and uh, it's looking pretty good. It should look a lot smarter underneath the bike when the bike's on the stand and it won't irritate the crap out of me anymore. Um, so now it's just a case of assembling the parts, uh, refitting it onto the bike. Right, I was going to grease the uh, axle, which means 
Putting some grease in here. I don't know why I'm using this more expensive bike grease because it would make more sense for me to use the um, lifetime supply of grease I bought the other week for the uh, XL rebuild. But here I am, for no apparent reason, using the expensive stuff. Um, before I assemble it, I'm going to put this rubber bump stop back on without breaking it. There we go. That's that back on. This spring is stronger than it looks. Come on, you bugger. Come on. Come on. Down you go. Down you go. Gotcha. Ooh, just worried for my fingers then. Whilst I was um, uh, doing the kickstand, uh, I had to take the exhaust off so. Here's another opportunity to um, spray up the uh, exhaust and the exhaust guard. The exhaust guard is just silver hammerite. It was cleaned up with um, meths and some uh, wet and dry paper. And the exhaust, I used and on the exhaust I used Rust-Oleum's um, heat proof paint. Uh, in an aerosol which uh, they say is good for 750 degrees now that is a peak heat for a short period of time so I've no doubt that um, as is usual when I paint these things the um, downpipe the exhaust downpipe will uh, probably flake off and go rusty quite quickly but the can should be okay for um, for a year or two it does need periodic redoing I haven't used Rust-Oleum one before, I've used the uh, Hammerite barbecue paint which is a matte finish and uh, tends to go a bit white after it gets hot so it'd be interesting to see how the Rust-Oleum one compares so um, yeah but it looks pretty smart uh, I did this on the wire wheel um, just to clean up all the rusty bits and uh, yeah I'm quite pleased with that so we'll stick that back on along with the legs and uh, we'll see how she goes
Okay, Susie's new feet. Well, not new, but painted anyway. And there we go, looking nice and smart and black. And the exhaust. Also looking smart and black. With the heat shield painted up. It was looking a bit tatty. Like the wheels look tatty now. I think they might be the next job. Take them off, clean them up, spray paint them. But the rest of the bike has a, an aged patina and that's something I'm not going to bother doing. The seat will get replaced, or at least the cover. Um, but the actual frame of the bike, I think I'm going to leave as is. It's, um, yeah, I mean it's got age related little rusty patches and the handlebars are a bit corroded and I'm going to just light over and say it adds to the charm there we go genuine 4021 miles so there we go another little bit ticked off the box everybody loves a cold start let's see how smoky she is <laughs> 